Good morning, everybody. Simplify 3D 4.0 dropped this morning and it has some super exciting features that I'm gonna to show to you today. So here's the website for Simplify 3D that explains their new features for 4.0. If you have already bought Simplify 3D, all you have to do is log into the website and download the new version, simple as that. It's got some really cool new features. Like for instance, the most exciting one to me is the variable print settings wizard that they have made up. For a long time, one of the most powerful features of Simplify 3D was that you could take not only multiple objects and give them different settings. You could do that absolutely and I, I have a video where I'm printing the low poly Pokemon and uh, uh, using variable settings to do that, but you can also take the same object and do variable settings for different layer heights in it. But it was such a pain in the neck to use. And as you're going to see later, they make it so much easier now. Uh, let's see, dual extrusion, the, the prime pillar and whatnot for dual extrusion are, are very cool. And I've played with those a little bit. The variable extrusion sizing, that is to say, they can now go down to a single extrusion width, which means do you remember in the past, whenever something would come to a fine tip, and then when it came in for the infill, it would go, oh, I can't make it all the way to the middle with my 0.4 millimeter nozzle, so I'm gonna do a back turn and leave a little little triangle in there. Well, not anymore. Simplify 3D will now go, oh, I can just put a little plastic in there and fill in those. Uh, there are some settings for that that I will go over in just a little bit for you. Um, they also have a new really cool support system where you can tell the, the slicer if you have dual nozzles like I do and you have some PVA like I do, you can tell it, well, when you do, when you get right up close to the model, what, what they used to call dense fill, uh, you can turn on dense uh, uh, support structure right there, which do a better job of supporting, but do it with the other, other nozzle, with other settings as well. So you could do it with a different material. But that just just a little bit right there, right next to the print, instead of using up all your PVA on all the supports. The majority of the supports are going to be just whatever garbage plastic you want or whatever your normal cheaper build material. And then the expensive PVA will just do a little cushion of it before the final print and we'll do it high density. It's absolutely beautiful. It's gorgeous. Uh, absolutely love that. I'm not gonna go over that anymore though in this video. It's cool, um, but I'm not gonna worry about it in this video. I got other things to show you. Um, and then they've also improved bridging. They've, they've uh, allowed you to choose how your bridging works a little bit. Um, they've uh, uh, got the ability to look at your, and they've always had to, Simplify 3D has always had the ability to analyze your mesh and tell if you have problems. They can't fix it and they still can't fix it, but they, they do allow you to uh, see if there's problems. Well, they also have the ability now to reduce the number of polygons in a mesh, which is something that I can do in, in Blender, other people can do in, in uh, um, Mesh Mixer. Now you can do it in Simplify 3D without having to export and import your model. So cool stuff, very cool stuff. Like I say, if you want to, if you want to, uh, um, uh, if you already have Simplify 3D, you already have this version, just go log in and download it. But let's take a look at some of the things that it can do. So here is a model that I loaded up. And you can see here uh, on, on the right, I've got all of my processes for a couple of my different machines. I've lost most of my processes. I keep on having to rebuild them, but it's all right. Uh, Simplify 3D makes it super easy to do that. And uh, so look at this model. Generally speaking in the past, if we wanted to print this model, uh, we'd have to choose a layer height that, that we'd be okay with. That's why I almost always print in 0.15 millimeter layer heights. If we printed this whole thing in 0.2 millimeter layer heights and prepared it to print, uh, the, the top layers, as it got very, very close to the top, would be obvious. Obvious that they're uh, uh, layers. The layers become 
terrible looking, but the sides always look fine because vertical layers, we can get away with chunkier layers, but it's, it's, it's as it gets close to the top. And if we saw that and we said, oh, that is terrible, that is unacceptable, we want to fix that. And notice this print takes 38 minutes. If we said, oh, we want to fix that, and we would take and change the layer height to uh, 0 0.06, we want really, really fine layers here. Uh, prepare to print. Well, now the top layers look really nice, although I, I probably didn't put enough uh, top layers in there. I probably need to increase the number of top layers, but uh, we're, we're wasting time on the sides that didn't really need this improvement, and our build time has gone up to two hours and four minutes. Gosh, it sure would be nice <laughs> if we could just say, you know what, on the top, I want it to be finer, but on the sides where I don't need that much detail, uh, I want it to be chunkier. And now again, Simplify 3D has always been able to do this, but it was very difficult to do. In the past, what you'd have to do is you'd have to add a new process. So I'm going to name this one, Rep1 uh, Right PLA, because that's how I name my processes. Um, and we'll, we will do this one at the chunky layer height. So we'll take it to point two. Um, oh, yeah, chunky. But then we'd also have to come into the advanced settings here and we say have to say, okay, start printing this at zero. Stop printing this at, I'd, I'd have to figure out where the height is, you know, let's say five or 10. Uh, actually, it's probably 20, come to think of it, because I made this in, in uh, Tinkercad in about two seconds. Uh, stop printing it at 20, but then I'd also have to come over here and I'd say, oh, okay, uh, zero, zero top layers because the next process is going to sit on top of it and it's going to have zero bottom layers. Otherwise, we'd have top layers and bottom layers sitting on each other and we don't want to do that. And then, uh, and then I hit OK on that one and then I have to come in and create a new process that goes from 20 to the top, but no bot. It's a pain in the neck. Check out how easy it is to do uh to do it now so i'm gonna go put my put my top or top layers back might even increase my top layers a little bit for this process uh turn this off okay all right hit okay instead i'm going to use this process that i just created the i'm going to call it the multi-process and i'm going to use the new variable settings wizard now for the variable settings wizard we can say okay i want to split right here at 20 and then add that location I want to split a little bit higher than that maybe take that up to up to 15 no uh, 20 how high did this go I think I want to take it up to 30 nope not 30 30 is as high as it goes so we'll take that up to 25 about halfway from the last one add that location and then I'll take this one up a little bit more maybe to 28 so that those very very top layers get their own and then I'll split the process and it splits the process you can choose which process to split right here by I'm choosing my multi process and boom now I have let's widen this just a little bit uh, now I have multi one two three and four ones on the bottom so I want my layer height to be point two uh, two's the next one up so I want my layer height to be maybe point one five right there uh, three is the next one up, so I'll maybe take my layer height to point 0.1 there, and then at the very top, I want my layer height to be as, as small as I want to go, 0.6, and then I prepare to print, grab all of these processes in here, hit go, and check out what has happened. At the bottom, it's nice and chunky. Once it hits this part, it goes a little bit fire. Now, there's a little bug. There's a little bug, and I noticed this before right here. Uh, where, where, because the layers don't mathematically mesh, it kind of skips part of a layer. And so I might want to go in and adjust my settings to fix that. Um, I think the problem, I think the problem is that it's not calculating the layers from that height, but it's still calculating them from the build plate, which is reasonable. Uh, hopefully, hopefully they'll get this fixed in the future. But if not, all I have to do is adjust that layer up just a little, just go one more layer. So take that slice and have it go, uh, what was that at 25, 25.15. And it should fix that problem up. Uh, what we're looking at there is a, is a split and, and we'll see that in the final print, but then it gets even finer and finer and finer until the top looks absolutely beautiful. 
we end up with a print. Um, let, me, let me put up a picture for you. The print, the one on the left here, you can see is, is the one printed at 0.2 millimeters the whole way and it gets chunky on the top. Then the one on the right is the one printed with variable settings and you can see that it looks like, you can also see the little bug there and you can see it's not super noticeable, but you can see that it looks absolutely gorgeous. But coming back to Simplify 3D, check it out. It only takes 48 minutes for this to print, just slightly more than if we printed it super chunky and way less than if we printed the whole thing super fine. So this is super exciting. Now, before you guys are in at the comments saying, oh, Slick 3er can already do this. Yes, Slick 3er can do this with layers, but I can also through this multi-slicing process, make each layer have different infills so that we can have a gradual infill for towards the top. If you've got something that for the most part, you wanna have vase mode, but near the top, you got a flat top and you wanna build up some, some uh, uh, infill before you get there so you can ensure you get a flat top, you can do that. And in fact, I've done that before in Simplify 3D in the old method. Now, again, people are gonna say, well, Cura has that, that thing and so does uh, desktop, uh, my, my uh, MakerBot desktop, it has that thing where it increases infill as it gets towards the top. Yes, but at the same time, you can't, you can change every part of the process through this. You can change the speed of the print. You can slow it down as you get to the top or speed it up as you get to certain parts of the print. You can change the temperature as you get to certain parts. Although I would just use temperature breaks for that. But any setting, any setting that you want can be changed at those layers. And while those other slicers can do the individual parts, none of them can do all of them. This this is why I like Simplify 3D. It's not perfect, I'll admit, but it does hit, uh, it's, it's the most powerful. It gives you the most strength and freedom to do whatever you want. So I absolutely love it. And, and I'm really excited about this multi-layer tool. A, a couple of times that I've had to use processes at multi-layers, I've hated to do it. Now it is so easy to do it. There's no reason for me not to play with it. Now there is uh, another setting that I want to talk to you about, about Simplify 3D's use of thin walls. So let's, let's remove this one and let's drop in uh, a name tag that I've got here. Pretty cool name tag. Uh, I, I intentionally use this one when I'm teaching 3D printing to kids to talk about, you know, invariably when they talk about, well, can we make our name a hole in Tinkercad? I'm like, yeah, you totally can, but check it out. And then I print this out and they see that the D and this hole in the P all falls out and things like that. But uh, this being a rounded model, when we slice it, and I'll just slice it with the, the normal uh, settings right there. So there we go. Um, let me turn off travel booths. We don't need to see those right now. In the past, areas that came to fine points, and particularly you'd see this with text a lot. Uh, boy, this one could actually benefit from the multi-material. Uh, when it came to thin points, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the print just wouldn't work. I, I used to have a, a test model that would come to you know, just a, a ridiculously fine point, almost almost a blade's edge. And I would run that through different slicers and see at what point it created a gap in that wall. And there were very few slicers that didn't create a gap in that wall. One of the notable ones was MakerBot Desktop. It actually, uh, when it saw that it got too thin to print with multi-nozzles, it would print with one nozzle. And so it would have this, instead of having a gap, it would have this very interesting thin wall there that didn't quite mesh up well, but I thought that is super useful and super functional in a lot of ways. And Simplify 3D now has settings for that under the advanced tab. So we can say here under external thin wall, allow single extrusion walls and internal thin wall types, we can say uh, it, it allows fill gap, which is good if we come to that really fine corner. Like if you've ever printed the octopus, you might notice that there's little triangles where there's no hole. Well, allow gap fill, we'll put a little bit of plastic in there to fill that in. But you can actually say use a single extrusion fill as well inside there. Now, 
because of these new settings right here, there's this new allowed perimeter overlap. And I recommend that when you download the new version of Simplify 3D, in every process you make, you bump this up to, I would say at least 65. Apparently in the old version, it was 85. The idea being, if you had something less than 0.8 millimeters, it would overlap, it, it, it would draw them but it would try to overlap the plastic and that would cause squish, but it would mean that it was capturing small details. They dropped that down to one or, or 10% and it meant that on a lot of my models, details were disappearing that I didn't want to disappear. Um, by bumping this up to, by bumping this up to 85, you'll get the exact same behavior as you did in the past. 65 generally works, but, but it's the amount of overlap Overlapped parts will not be accurate, but they will allow for uh, better better details. And the other thing is down here with the minimum extrusion length, I drop that down to zero. Uh, because if you say, yeah, you've got to have a certain length before we'll even do a single extrusion wall, most of my objects where I can benefit from single extrusion walls are curved. And since those curves consist of a bunch of little uh, uh, lines right next to each other, they never reach that minimum length. So I just drop it down to zero and I get to see minute, uh, walls a lot of the time. But that means that I have to be a little bit more hands-on and pay attention. So let's take a look at where the thin walls show up in this model. Uh, not really. Okay, so a little bit on top here. So do you see where it's dark blue here? That's where it's determined, oh, it's getting too honking thin. So let's just do a single extrusion wall right there. Now this model doesn't really benefit from it, but it does mean that where it would have given up in the past, it now tries to fill it in a little bit with a single extrusion wall. And in fact, it tries to make that single extrusion wall thinner and thinner by extruding less plastic and moving faster when it does it. It's so cool. Th this is a this is a super, super addition to it. Also inside, I, I don't know if we have any places, uh, I suppose a few places here where there might be single extrusion gap fills and whatnot. Um, but yeah, the, it, the, the holes in them are no longer a problem. Uh, clearly this model I need to run through no, that's right. That's right. The way it's supposed to be right there. Yeah. So there we go. Um, single extrusion wall. Super cool. But do, but do change that setting under the advanced tab to allow a higher perimeter overlap than the default. Um, I, 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 if, if you don't do that, you're going to be like, oh, Cura can catch these details on my models, but Simplify 3D can't. What's up with it? Well, it's that setting right there. They turned it down because they were more interested in accurate prints than in catching fine details, which I, I totally support. But personally, I do a lot of prints for aesthetic reasons, so I don't care if they're perfectly accurate. I want them to catch all the details that they can, but it's up to you. Still, love those settings. Love Simplify 3D. This is, this is really super cool. I do plan to do a video where I'm comparing, in my opinion, some of the top uh, uh, slicers in the future, and so that will be coming. But if you've already bought Simplify 3D, you should go get the new version of Simplify 3D today. It's it's awesome. It, of course, it improves a lot of little things that you probably won't notice, except that you'll notice that your prints are suddenly coming out just, just slightly better. Maybe some of the problems you had in the past were gone. Super excited by this. Super happy uh, about Simplify 3D's update, and, and I hope that you're excited by it too. Uh, as always, I want to thank you guys very much for watching. Safety first. I'll see you next time. Thank you.